And everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Sad to be back, everybody. Never been so depressed to return. Golly. Back home here in uh, absolutely horrific Seattle. So uh, it's raining like crazy. We're breaking the rain record today. Gah. No, I'm not putting the microphone stand back up. No. The, uh, this uh, vacation is going to go on forever. It just reminds me of being sitting there on that rocking chair with old Vinny. Oh, man. Anyway. Hey, we got a lot of news to get into today. It's Monday here on the program. And uh, you know what that means. We got Monday Night Raw coming up tonight. And uh, we actually have a match announced, believe it or not, which is uh, Damian Priest defending his, uh, his title against Finn Balor. And also, Edge is going to be on the show. That's literally all we know about it. So that's my Raw preview for tonight. And we've got all of the news. We've got more matches for WrestleMania. As in, they're going to tell you what day the matches are because... You know, they're trying to sell tickets desperately here. To the point that they're bringing back, of all people, Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon scheduled for a match at WrestleMania. Although, uh, all of the news today is uh, how full of it WWE is. We've got uh, updates on the unification match, which apparently isn't really going to be much of a unification match. And we've got updates on Vince McMahon wrestling, although he's apparently not going to be wrestling. And a bunch of other stuff as well. So if you're looking to uh, if you're looking to buy a ticket to not get what's advertised, if I got the big show for you, everybody. We'll tell you about that here on the program today. Also, what day you should buy a ticket for if you want to see Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. We have AEW's announcement. Uh, they're heading to the West Coast, so we'll give you some upcoming dates for uh, for AEW. And, uh, of course, we've got SmackDown, Rampage, and uh, plenty more. So stick around, everybody. We're back. Wrestling Observer Live. And uh, we're going to talk about this... Uh, this West Coast swing here from AW here in a little while. But uh, no, for the guy that asked me on the chat, that is not the uh, big announcement that Tony's going to have on Wednesday. That's something else. And I don't know what it is. Do you know what it is, Mike? I don't. Do you think Dave knows what it is? No, Dave was really weird last night. It was like, there's a lot of rumors. I don't know what he said, but it was like, he did, I don't think he knows what it is. But he's heard rumors. But I haven't even heard rumors. I don't know what it is. Am I, uh, am I out to lunch? Hmm. God. Don't know. I need to not look at the chat. There's Which so much, one? There's so much stuff going on, and everyone, all anyone can talk about is my hair. What'd uh, you do? I didn't do anything. That's the point. Did you had a cut? Ah, oh, Brian's hair was blonde in Hawaii, but it's gray in Seattle. What's going on? Maybe it didn't change color, blokes. Maybe you're imagining things like I've been telling you for weeks now. Now, let's get into the news here because we got two top stories that are just, they're incredible WWE stories. I'm just going to read this word for word from WrestlingObserver.com. On the latest episode of Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer gave an update on WWE's title unification plans for WrestleMania 38 and its aftermath. WWE Champion Brock Lesnar and Universal Champion Roman Reigns are set to face off in a winner-take-all championship unification match at Mania 38. But it doesn't appear that WWE will only have one men's world championship for long. Meltzer noted on Sunday's Wrestling Observer Radio that he has been told WWE does not believe it is, quote, feasible in the modern environment to have one world champion for both Raw and SmackDown. Quote, the deal here is that it is a unification match. From what I am told, it's the same idea as the last time they unified the titles. Remember like 20 years ago, 18 years ago when they did that? And then like a week later, they just handed a belt to Triple H? I was told that it is not feasible in the modern environment to not have each brand, given the two networks, have a champion. So this would be a unification match, and then they will not forget about it. But there will be two champions. So we're going to have a unification match at WrestleMania, but we will not have a unified champion for any length of time. 
Which brings us to a match between Vince McMahon and SmackDown announce- announcer Pat McAfee looks to be on the cards for WrestleMania 38. Dave Meltzer reported this afternoon the match between McAfee and McMahon is listed in the internal schedule for WrestleMania. This follows a post-wrestling report from Friday where it was reported that a program between the two is expected to start and lead to WrestleMania. Uh, Dave then noted that... Uh, very unlikely Vince is actually going to have a wrestling match. There's going to be a lot of smoke and mirrors. So you're telling me that we got two matches now that we're advertising for WrestleMania where they're not going to give you what they're advertising? I've mentioned this before. I've mentioned this before. But I have never in my life seen... A res- I, I should say a wrestling company because I'm sure that there are actual real companies out there that are like this. But I have never seen a wrestling company that made life so willingly difficult for themselves. Never. Not one time ever. Like, you know, Impact Wrestling, life was difficult for them, but they were like completely incompetent. Okay. And, uh, you know, WCW, life got difficult for them also due to incompetence but the funny thing about wwe is the guy at the very top you know uh, god bless the guy he's completely incompetent but there's like a lot of smart people working there but man i hear so much stuff from this company and it's like you're smart but you you come up with all of these ideas these circuitous ideas that, that that go in this big circle and just make life way more difficult than it needs to be this thing here about how i want to read the exact quote It is not, quote, feasible in the modern environment to not have each brand, given the two networks, have a champion. Bro, how many times have we heard, oh, man, you know, Fox doesn't know that Brock is now going to be on Raw. Oh, SmackDown wants to make sure that they've got Ronda Rousey. Dude, I listen, I'm not in the meetings. Are you actually telling me that, like, these people are insistent, like, these network executives are insistent that we have a very specific and very limited roster, and we prefer that over being able to have everybody? You honestly are telling me that if you went to Fox and you were like, listen, all right, we're going to give you Ronda and uh, Roman, but like Brock's largely going to be on the, we, we got to give USA something. And then you go to USA and you're like, you're going to get Brock, but like we got to give, you know, Fox Ro-. you're telling me that they would prefer that to you going to them and saying, you know what? We're going to, we're going to unify these two rosters and Fox, bro, you're going to get Lesnar and, and Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks and Brock Lesnar and Roman. And guess what? USA, you're going to get Roman and Brock. You're telling me that each network is going to go, no, 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 no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I prefer not to have all of the biggest stars. I'd rather have half of the biggest stars exclusively. You're telling me that that's what they prefer? So anyway... We have this problem. You know, in the modern era, you just can't have one champion. In the modern era, you have to have what, whatever. Who cares? But anyway, we're advertising a match that we're going to deliver in the moment. But then it's going to be just like, whatever. The belts are going to go back to each brand afterwards. So, you know, pay your money for the one night to see which guy's going to win. And then uh, we'll go back to the way things used to be. And that Vince McMahon match, make sure you buy your ticket. We don't want to get stuck at 55000 and have Brian be right here. So make sure you buy your ticket to see Vince McMahon wrestle, but then he's not gonna. We're just going to do a bunch of gimmicks. But you'll still bow to him and, uh, and thank him for everything that he's done for this business. I got nothing more to say. Aren't they past 55000 tonight? I think they're barely past 55,000. Well, look, at least they're being transparent about everything this year. They're not even hiding the fact that, you know, they just they said it. It's impossible in this environment to have only one champion. So, you know, that match is going to lead to nothing. It's going to lead to a backlash match maybe or whatever, but at some point belt goes off and He'll say, whoever wins this match, I only want to be on this brand. Why am I working so much? I'm done with this. However they decide to go do things. They're bringing back Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. They're bringing back Stone Cold Steve Austin. 
They've already brought back Ronda Rousey. There's just no bones about what this year is. It is we're gonna put on the wackiest Johnny Knoxville for the Intercontinental title. We're putting on the wackiest show we possibly can. We are running a WrestleMania show during WrestleMania. That's what we're doing. All these other promotions that run these wacky shows, we're doing the same thing, except it's going to be WrestleMania. And what will it mean the next day? I guess we'll find out on Raw. I it, it just to me. That's what a lot of this is. It's a lot of stuff that in a on WrestleMania night one and night two is going to be something, I guess. But it's like, I mean, for the future, again, how many times are you going to continue to try to do this? How many times are you going to be able to pull something like this off? How many more names can you pull back from the past? Is Santino Morello? Well, bro, if we're bringing back seventy-six-year-olds, and we can go on for a long damn time pulling ba- people back I'm from saying, the past. Are we bringing back? I mean, is Santel- Santino Morella a big enough name? You've exhausted everyone now. You've exhausted everyone except for Rock. Who who knows if he comes back? But if Austin comes back, who? <laughs> That's it. So, I mean, it just the law of diminishing returns with bringing all these people back. I mean, Steve Austin's name was said. WWE's product is so cold right now. I guess maybe it hasn't hit the mainstream. Nobody is saying a word about it. Now they're hoping Vince and Pat McAfee, because it can be promoted on Fox, is going to be the thing. Uh, you know, at some point, you're going to need to create stars. It's said over and over hey, again. If you, got enough if you stars. had a bunch of stars, you wouldn't have this problem. Get out of here. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Two stars here like handheld mics. And you geeks can't handle any change. Fine. It's back on the stand. Y'all happy now? Except now I'm out of focus. Anything else? Watch this, everybody. Ah, see that? Look at that. Hey, anyway. Lift up your sleeve again. Lift up your sleeve again. What is going on there with that uh, with that cuff? You put your thumb in it, bruh. What, are you a 16-year-old girl? Would that be a Jesus problem? Christ. Now listen. Yeah, well, you yeah. know what's uh, funny about this whole uh, feasibility thing is uh okay, fine. You you go to you go to Fox and you talk to all these geeks in USA and they're like, "No! Damn it, we only want half a roster." How there's no way we want all the stars. We're paying $1.3 billion between the two of us. We only want half the stars, okay? Don't even argue. We only want... Fine. All right? Fine. You get half and you get half. But the biggest star is going to be the champion. They're going to work both shows. Right? Feasibility. You know, somebody inside WWE right now is going, Brian Alvarez, what do you know about anything? What do you know about business? We've been able to sell these fools on the fact we are only giving them half a roster. And then whenever they perk up, then we go, oh, well, Brock will work both or Roman's going to show up or whatever it's going to be. So maybe maybe they're just geniuses in the fact that they've been able to get a billion dollars for a half ass roster with really no stars whatsoever, except for what? Two. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, and that's about it. It's amazing. They've had Rhea Ripley, and they've had Bianca, and Bianca obviously had to to deal with the fact that, you know, when they brought Becky back, they just completely mashed her over. And, of course, well, that's supposed to going to rectify itself at WrestleMania. Sure, maybe it will, but let's see what actually happens after that. They've had Rhea and and Bianca for this long. You'd think with a roster that would have those two – Charlotte, Sasha, I mean, it just, it's amazing. Becky, in theory, should be a huge star right now. It's amazing they have these women and they still need Ronda Rousey. You think if they were firing on all cylinders, they would even need Ronda Rousey? The answer is actually no. No, they wouldn't. But they have done nothing to develop so many of those women I just mentioned. You know, it's funny, by the way, is I know this person's being sarcastic, but, uh, but he says, hey, Brian, how's your territory doing? Well, you know what? You're right. I don't have a territory. But you know what I have is a... Uh, 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 Business? Brain. Business? Okay. And you know, you know, I don't have a territory, but you know who did have a successful territory back in the day? 
Who's that? Well, his name was Vince McMahon. He had a very successful territory. It was uh, it was 1999, and uh, his business was absolutely on fire. It was called the Monday Night Wars. It was, uh, in terms of like popularity of professional wrestling, it was the uh, the absolute peak of this business. Much, much, much more popular. Not as financially uh, successful because television deals weren't what they are today, but in terms of popularity of pro wrestling, would you argue that Vince McMahon's 1999 was more popular than today? Yes. So it was a pretty popular territory in 1999, you're telling me? It, it was. Yeah, you it know was. what happened in 1999? What's that? Well, uh, they had a show called Raw, and they had a show called SmackDown, and they were on different networks. Raw was on USA, and SmackDown was on UPN. And somehow, and I don't know how, it was feasible then, but not now. Why? They had everybody working both shows on both networks. And they had one champion that worked both shows in that very successful territory. But Brian, that was 23 years ago. 23 years ago. Bro, they lived 23 years ago. Nothing has changed in this company. They still wish it was 23 years ago. Except in this case, it's, it's completely, absolutely, positively unfeasible to do what they did in 1999. By the way, my wife got me this this top here, so everyone shut up about it. So once again, she got it for herself, and you decided to like take it out of the closet. Oh, she like, bought it for me things. as a gift. Hmm. What is a gag gift? <laughs> Two or? women's championship matches are set for night one of WrestleMania 38. So if you're a fan of women, then I've got the WrestleMania night for you. WWE has announced Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair's Raw Women's Championship match will take place at WrestleMania 38, night one, this April. AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, is hosting the two nights, Saturday, April 2, and Sunday, April 3. That means that Lynch versus Bel Air will be happening on the same night as the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Brock Lesnar and Universal Champion Roman Reigns' winner-take-all title unification match has been announced for night two of WrestleMania. So now you know what to buy your ticket for. I don't know. I don't know. Still waiting to see what happens with Johnny Knoxville. That's really going to be the thing that pushes me over the edge on which night I'm going to buy and go down for. Bro, Sami Zayn kicked this guy in the head so hard on SmackDown. Like, <laughs> they they did... Uh, Johnny Knoxville comes out and he challenges uh, Sami Zayn, and Sammy <laughs> says no. And they get into this, uh, they get into this brawl, and I, I can't help but you know think about all the concussions Johnny Knoxville has had, and uh, and in his words, almost dying of a brain hemorrhage like a year ago when he was filming this movie, and maybe he was exaggerating a little bit. But uh, any of you blokes out there watch Johnny Knoxville and think that guy's never had a concussion? Raise your hand if so. There's that hole in my shirt again. Raise your hand, everybody. No one? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, he's been cleared by WWE. And so I'm watching this angle, and uh, Sami Zayn throws him in the corner, and he goes for this running uh, mafia kick, as I like to call it, Yakuza kick. And, uh, and bro, he misses by a mile. I mean, he's nowhere near Johnny Knoxville's head. And at first, I, I'm like, golly, they, they don't usually, uh, you know, <laughs> they don't usually get shots like that. For, for Like, for once in, in eternity, they didn't cut the camera 92 times during the kick. They just left it one continuous shot, and you could see that it missed. And I was like, man. Well, that's good. I don't want to see the guy kicked in the face, so, you know. Then Sami Zayn puts him in the corner again, and he goes running, and uh, he kicks this dude right in the face, and it's the it's like a baseball bat hitting a tree. I was like, oh, my God, that sounded brutal. And I thought, this, you know, this Sami Zayn, what do you want to say about the guy? Man, he can slap a leg. Then they go... Check this out from before the break. And what WWE likes to do, I've mentioned this a million times, is uh, their replays are always weird. Like, you know, any other sport, if there's like a big, you know, some guy gets punched in the head in UFC, they they turn on the uh, the 4K cam in super, super duper slow motion. And so you see the thing go, and the whole guy's face does whatever and spit goes flying. It's gross. But uh, not WWE. WWE, there's like a big uh, move, and they're like, watch this move in slow motion. And you see the guy's foot coming at the guy's face in super slow motion, and all of a sudden it goes, bam, in super fast speed so you can't see anything. 
Not this time. They got out that 4K cam. And you just see Sami Zayn's foot just go bleh, right into the face of Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville goes, ah! And he falls down. The referee goes to make sure he's alive. I'm like, did someone smarten up Sami Zayn that this guy had 16 concussions and a brain hemorrhage? Because Jiminy Christmas, he kicked him as hard as he could in the head. Now they're going to have a match at WrestleMania. This is like the WrestleMania where it's like, well, we made it through this pandemic, so let's roll every dice that we've got. Exactly. Let's put Vince in the ring. Let's put the guy with the brain hemorrhage in the ring. We're let's drunk. get Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was told in 2002 he should never wrestle again because he could get paralyzed. Let's put him in the ring 20 Edge. years later. Well, I mean, Edge Edge is held up all right, but, but still. man, they are rolling the dice on this show. Thank God this is not my show. Hmm. They ain't rolling no dice. I don't dice. have a territory, thank God. They're not rolling the dice. They're just literally No, they up. are rolling the dice, Mike. No, 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 no. Like rolling the dice would mean they're put they're making it a risk. There's no risk here, really. What they're what? doing is they're emptying out the toy box, is what they're doing. Look, Brian, how many tickets have already been sold? How much money has already been I'm made? I'm talking off of physical this thing? risk for a 76-year-old guy who was told a decade well, ago no more bumps. Yes. Uh, uh, a guy who had a brain hemorrhage a year ago is in yes. the ring doing a match. A guy who was told not to wrestle because he could get paralyzed 20 years yeah. ago is back wrestling again. Are they going to put Hunter in next? Yes, they might. I'm not even joking. What's next now? Hunter. Who are they going to bring out next? Hunter to be out there when Cody faces whoever he's going to face. This guy says they're rolling one die. No, bro, you don't get it, okay? Especially in the case of Vince McMahon, no, right? Physically, yes. Dude, These this are, they guy, are rolling a lot this of dice. Guy, <laughs> this guy is the boss, okay? He's going to get in the ring, and once he's in the ring, he's going to do whatever he wants, all right? That's it. It doesn't matter if he was cleared. It doesn't matter if he was given restrictions. The moment that guy gets in the ring, maybe he'll be smart, <laughs> and he's not going to do anything stupid. But once that guy gets in the ring, there's nothing you can do about it. Oops, hard way, pal. <laughs> he got headbutted by Kevin Owens, his last physical appearance, in the head. Yeah, busted even... open, bled yes. everywhere. Yeah, he <laughs> shoot headbutted by Kevin Owens. I can't believe the ni 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 what's the word naiv naiv naivety naivety not my whole naivety <laughs> of these people here they're taking no naivete risks. <laughs> whatever whatever naive okay naive so uh, naivety on the Wednesday after this year's double or nothing pay per view AW is going to make its Los Angeles debut it was announced today the Wednesday June one episode of Dynamite will be at the Forum in Inglewood California. Double or nothing taking place in Las Vegas Sunday, May 29th. I'll be there! Dynamite episode will be the first ever AEW show to take place in California. Also announced today, the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California, hosting the Double or Nothing Fallout edition of Rampage. I got a big list of upcoming shows. We'll do that after the break. Observer Live. AEW. You know this Tony Khan guy... Finally took a finally took some of the advice of old Nick Khan of WWE. Nick Khan, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, came up with the brilliant idea to announce your dates in advance. Never before in the history of wrestling were dates announced in advance. But Nick Khan thought, you know, hmm, what I think we should do might help draw fans to announce dates in advance. And so we have, uh, actually, we don't even have all of the dates for 2022. Even though it's funny, I remember 1999, I used to have all the pay-per-view dates for the upcoming year. Hmm. Anyway, so AEW's got some shows coming up. We got uh, March 2nd in Daly's Place, Jacksonville. March 3rd, Orlando, Florida. March 4th, Orlando as well. Revolution Pay-Per-View is in Orlando. Then we've got uh, March 9th in Florida, Astoria, Estero, Florida. And uh, many, many more. We've got, uh, I'm not going to read all these. But we got Garland, Texas, New Orleans, Philadelphia, New York, Nevada, a couple of shows in Nevada. And then, yes, Inglewood, California, Ontario, California. And then they head on June 3rd to the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. So I can't really call it a West Coast swing, but we are going to get some shows in, in California. And I am, 
I am surprised we haven't had uh, dates in, you know, the Portland area. Dude, Seattle would do huge for AEW, but not yet. We will have to wait. Well, well maybe there were there were logistical reasons why. Who knows why when it comes to some of these buildings and all that sort of stuff with with COVID, all that. Maybe that was part of the reason as to why. Maybe they did think about having a SWIP. Who knows what it is, but it doesn't matter right now. They're coming to Detroit. They're coming to Southern California, and that's how. That's all you had to say. They're they're they having their debuts, and at some point, I'm sure they are going to run Portland and Seattle and all the places that they haven't been. But for right now, you know that that Southern California swing is going to be a big deal. You know, Las Vegas is what whatever that Sunday is, the 29th. So they still have a show to announce as far as Dynamite goes and wherever that taping is going to be. You have uh, Rampage at the Toyota Center. So it'll be interesting to see where they pick, you know, as far as they're running Vegas. Do they run Glendale? Do they run Albuquerque? You know, do they run somewhere else in California before they decide to run in, in uh, at the Toyota Center for that live Rampage? This person here says, Brian, COVID is still a thing. What does that have to do with running the West Coast? Am Local I missing something here? Heavier restrictions, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Huh. So we've got, uh, I want to wish the best to Alex Zane. He suffered a significant eye injury during Saturday's GCW Coldest Winter Show. Tweeted today, he suffered a ruptured globe. Mm-hmm. There's one thing Maybe. I would ever suffer. It is a ruptured globe. He was doing a death match. Four panes of glass broken. One piece of glass went through his eyeball, and so he had to have it removed, and then his eye put back together. I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. Glass doesn't listen too good. That is for absolutely sure. And, you know, it looked as if... <sighs> I, the the cut that he got on his arm was bad enough, but then you know, and again, I don't know if if piece of glass went up and got caught up there or whatever it is, but something you know violated the actual globe of the eye itself. How long he's going to be out for? I don't know. I'm sure he's going to be wearing an eye patch for a while as well too. That's going to be something he's going to have to get used to. So it was a certainly a. Ultimately, an expensive death match. That is for sure for him to have his very first one. Cole Radrick had his first a week before. Went much more swimmingly than it did, although some of the spots weren't exactly the same thing either. Uh, Alex Zane, you know, doing a, a huge twisting splash, you know, over Jimmy Lloyd on a, a pane of glass. It's, uh, you know, you just can't predict where shards are going to go. Sometimes there's nothing that happens. A lot of times nothing happens. Sometimes really bad things can happen. Here's a good example. All right, uh, we're going to go to the uh, feedback here. We can talk about Rampage and SmackDown if you'd like to as well. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, Tony here has a point, and uh, I'll just read it, then I'll talk about it. He says, when they started the brand split in 2002, the business started going down. Now, I would not... I would not say that uh, the reason that things collapsed after the attitude area, after the attitude era, was because of the brand split. Uh, there were many, many things that happened: the death of, of World Championship Wrestling, uh, the death of uh, the invasion when WWF bought WCW, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin turning heel, The Rock going to Hollywood. I mean, there were there were a thousand reasons that things started going down, but. It did go down after the brand split. So it's not like the brand split remedied anything, slowed anything down. I mean, I, I have been an advocate of getting rid of this brand split for a long time now, especially yeah. because one of the main reasons that they claimed that they needed a brand split was because you couldn't run two house show tours unless you had two rosters. Even though in the 80s, they ran four house show tours with only one roster. What was required was to think and plan a little bit, which uh, there is an inability to think and plan today, apparently, because unless you have a brand split, you just can't possibly run two different tours. But anyway, 
they run house shows now. They're all uh, super shows. They're all combined brand shows. So the only, the literally the only reason to have a brand split today is this claim that Fox and USA want to pay uh, $600 million each for half the roster, which, I mean, if that's what they want, it ain't my money. But I, I find that hard to believe. I'll just say, if you're going to do a brand split, actually do a proper one. You know, you could, if you actually treated your championships and actually held them in some regard and actually had some thought you know, put into some of these things, you could have a world champion on both brands. You could have a U.S. champion that goes to, or sorry, intercontinental champion that goes to both brands. You could have tag team cha- and you could actually have stars wearing these belts because you've actually built up stars, and you could actually have two rosters that are fighting so they could go back and forth and make more money and have more prestige and be seen on both shows. And do more things like that. If you're going to have a brand split, do something with it. They've never been able to do anything with it. And they've never been able to stick to their guns when it comes to having any sort of long-term planning for anything. And it's worse now than it's ever been. But nothing means anything. Literally nothing means anything. Only Brock and, and Roman and where they are deciding to show up. And obviously Brock being on both shows especially, you know, what, what does that tell you? First here says Nick Wayne versus Blake Christian. This match was awesome. You love everything about it, except for commentary making fun of you at the beginning of the match. What did they say? And who I'm, was it? I am sure that Dave Prezak only says nice things about you. Well, normally he does. Was it Prezak? Actually, it wasn't Prezak. It was Lenny Leonard. It was uh-huh. Lenny Leonard. Yeah, it was Lenny Leonard and uh, Kevin Gill. Kevin may not have said Dude, as many nice I things. I want a. Uh, I need a recap. Well. I need to tell you what, Nick Wayne, awesome match. I didn't, I didn't see Defy Fifty. I don't know where I can see that. It, 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 is that on the streaming service? I don't know, but I got to see this match with Shane Strickland. He just had had a match with e- Ethan HD last weekend and Jordan Oliver last weekend as well too. Both sides of the country, Prestige Wrestling and GCW last weekend. Nick, again, say it. It's been said a zillion times, keeps putting on incredible performances for his age. It's amazing that people want to work with this kid. you got veterans that have been around more than uh, double his age, triple his age, you know, and they actually want to work with him. It's an amazing thing. I will never forget after that uh, Joey Janela match, Joey Janela said that Nick Wayne was the best wrestler he'd ever been in the ring with. That's what Joey Janela said. During the, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Brian, can you give me one good reason to watch WrestleMania this year? This is from Dagan, I can tell. I have zero interest in anything WWE's putting out right now, knowing full well none of it matters. Well, listen, if you're going to watch any WWE show, then you should watch WrestleMania. But you're not going to have a whole lot that matters on any of the shows, because it's, at this point, about creating content. It's not about doing long-term storytelling. It's just the banter cre- day. But you know what? The funny thing is, every now and then they actually do some long-term storytelling and people get mad about it. Like Bianca Belair getting beaten in 26 seconds at SummerSlam and then oh, having to break. climb from the bottom, Soul Survivor, Survivor Series, win the Royal Rumble, Why get her match with Why would anybody believe Becky. in anything that they try to do? Yes. You well, it's happened they- so far. Oh, my God. You got to live in the moment, really? Mike. Okay, give me a break, Brian. Well, look at the... Sh- Look at, excuse me, look at the stuff that they have done with Becky. Look at the sorry interludes in Becky. I mean, this whole thing with coming off of, I guess she's got her mojo back after looking like a putz against Lita. And she's schlepping out there like a loser after looking like a loser with Charlotte talking down to her and Rhonda talking down to her, saying she, they're not even, she's not even worth her time. Boy, this has been fantastic. Listen. What a great build. Look, bottom Hold line on. is they haven't done a great build. What they found out was, whether it was accidental or not, Bianca Belair and Dewdrop have great chemistry. And that's been the thing that has been at least going on is the fact that Bianca is winning. And she actually has had Dewdrop out there to look good against. And thank God for that, because that's been the only thing she's had. That's it. That's all. Listen, everybody, listen to me. If you don't like what they've done... Fine, okay? That's your opinion. But the fact of the matter is... Brian lets it play out, y'all. They did a storyline 
where Becky Lynch returned and beat Bianca Belair in 26 seconds at SummerSlam. And the story was that Bianca would fight her way back to the top and win the title at WrestleMania. If you don't like the way that they did it, that's fine. Is that but really Bianca what they had planned, was though, the Brian? sole survivor at Survivor Series. She won the Women's Royal Rumble. Hey, listen, if she loses at WrestleMania, whatever, okay? But I expect her to beat Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Mm. And she probably, I hope she does. In a place where plans change, though, it's hard to really believe that. I don't know if this is been so pure from them the entire time I, I i can't believe that look how many times they've changed their minds on other things and decisions that they've made i'd like to believe that that's the case it's hard to give them any credit for it, though it really is especially with the way that they've done becky especially with the way this thing's gone along it really hasn't gone to make bianca really any better it just gives her a victory Again, she's, I don't think, in any better position now than she was, and that's unfortunate because she should be a lot bigger star than what she is. This person says, who is left for Roman Reigns after Brock? Madcap Moss? Bro, we all know who's left for Roman Reigns. Nobody, okay? And it's not new. It's not new. This has been the case for the last year. Oh, we need someone for Roman Reigns. Well, you know, let's pluck Cesaro out of the the bottom of the card, and we'll give him a three-week push, and then he's going to have a match, and no one's going to believe he can win, and then he'll be defeated, and then we'll move on to the next guy we pluck out of the mid-card. That's all that's going to happen until next year when they think they're getting a rock. But I'm telling you right now, my prediction for 2023, it's not going to be a rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Says Brian, what is your prediction on the Tony Khan announcement on Wednesday? I, I honest to God, I have no earthly idea. Can he, I guess? He says it's not about one specific guy. It's good for the whole industry, which mm-hmm. would include WWE. By the way, I, I don't know. Streaming service? How's that good for WWE? I mean, he didn't specifically say WWE, but well, he said, I mean, if it, he said wait, this would wait, be good it, for the entire business. Well, the business a lot of times doesn't mean WWE when people talk about it. So, when I say the whole business, that's WWE, New Japan, Stardom, AEW. Not necessarily because it benefits the bit. Look, if he's to buy, let's say, Shimmer's video library from from Dave Prezak, right? And he's to buy Ring of Honors. He's to buy whoever's. He's to buy whatever, okay? Sinclair's sucking it on the the whole deal that Fox got over on him with the with the with the sports networks. They they're hemorrhaging money. We saw that they shuttered a lot, even though they did a lot for Ring of Honor. Say it's that right. Let's just say hypothetically it's that. That's better for the wrestling business, realistically, than WWE having it bearing it. It's not good for WWE, but it's good for the wrestling business because this stuff survives instead of going to a vault and dying. Because it would be a new service that he's providing, and he's got content and brings value to it. So, but, yeah, it would actually be that way. Here's the I don't thing, think though. when a lot of people talk about, like, it's going to be better for the business, they don't mean WWE. He's He said that this is this is an equivalent of the, the first dance. CM Punk returning to this business after eight years, selling out the Chicago, or the, the whatever they call it. I mean, if, if he came on TV and said, I bought the Shimmer Tape Library. Or the ROH tape library. I mean, that would be great to keep it alive, but would fans see that the same way they saw the return of CM Punk to wrestling? I have no idea what it is. No clue. i got to talk to Dave. Anyway, we're out of time. Thanks, Mike, as always. Call us in the studio. Check out the Cyber Wrestling Observer Live.